Hello, so you'd like to become a streetcar operator? Well, I can tell you it's a lot of fun and it's not all that difficult. First, let's take a look at a streetcar. This is Twin Cities car number 1300. Although there are small differences between each of our TCRT cars, 1300 is pretty typical. I'll point out some of the important parts. Here's one now, right here. Here's another one. This looks important. I'll bet this does something. Okay, that's enough kidding around. Car 1300 is a tad over 46 and a half feet long. It's a little bit over 9 feet wide. And it weighs 47,800 pounds. That's almost 24 tons. That's as much as seven Asian elephants. Those are the ones with the small ears. The right side of the car is called the gate side. Originally, all TCRT cars had gate rear doors, like our car number 1239. Even after the cars were converted to two-door configuration, the name stuck. The left side of the car is called the pole side. On two track sections of line, the poles supporting the wires were down the middle, so the pole was on the left side of the car. This here is called a fender. Some people call it a cow catcher, but it's actually designed to catch people. If somebody's standing in the middle of the tracks, the fender knocks them into the basket instead of the car running them over. Many a drunk's life was saved by a fender, probably. Look up on top of the car and you'll see the trolley pole. And attached to the trolley pole is the trolley wheel. The trolley wheel runs along the electrical line. That's where we get our electricity from. The electricity flows through the wheel, down the pole, through the controller, and to the motors, and then into the rail. We'll have a look at the controller in a minute. This gadget here is called a retriever. The retriever's job is to pull the trolley pole down if the trolley wheel comes off the wire. If it didn't do its job, the pole could get entangled in the wire network. That's not a good thing. The car rides on two trucks. Each truck has two motors on it, and each axle is driven by a motor. And each axle has two wheels on it. Can you tell me how many wheels a streetcar has? Underneath here, there's a brake shoe. There's one on each of the eight wheels. When you apply the brakes, air pressure pushes the brake shoe against the wheel. When you release the brakes, springs pull the shoe back off the wheel. It's a pretty simple arrangement. By the way, the air compressor and the tanks are under the car. When the air pressure gets low, you'll hear the compressor come on. It's a sound you'll learn to like. It tells you that everything's working the way it should. There's a rear view mirror. There's a headlight and a tail light. These lights under here are called ditch lights. They're not prototypical. We've added them to all our cars to make night operations safer. What else is there? Well, this car has a front door and a rear door. Passengers board through the front door and they exit through the rear. Let's take a look inside. Meet Phil. He's our motorman today. And in the back is our conductor, Elaine. During a revenue shift, the people on the crew typically rotate. Motorman, conductor, station agent, and at Como Harriet, crossing guard. Everybody gets to do every job. All the controls a motorman needs to operate a streetcar are located right here on the front platform. As I mentioned, every car is unique. Controls might look a bit different or be in slightly different locations, but they function the same way and the look or location doesn't affect operation. Here's the most important control, the brake valve. It has three positions. To the far right is full application. You're letting air into the brake cylinder, which pushes the brake shoes against the wheels. To the far left is full release. All the air is let out of the system. While you're running the car, you need to hold the brake handle in the full release position. If you let go, a spring pushes it over to full apply. The car will stop. Very suddenly. That's a safety feature. It's called a dead man. I think you can guess how it got its name. There's a center position called lap. In the lap position, no air is moving in or out of the brake cylinder. You're going to spend a lot of time getting to know the brake valve. Stopping the streetcar smoothly and where you want to end up takes the most practice. 
Front and center is the air pressure gauge. There are two indicators. The red pointer shows the pressure in the storage tank, and the black one tells you how much air you've applied to the brake cylinder. Associated with the brake valve is the control transfer lever. This shifts control of the brake system and some important electrical controls from the front platform to the rear. Since we can't turn our streetcars around, we spend half of each trip going backward. That's part of the conductor's job. Some of our streetcars are double-ended. They're designed to go in either direction. But our Twin Cities cars, like number 1300 here, weren't designed that way. The controls in the back are limited. This control transfer lever has a knob. Pull the knob out and move the lever toward the rear of the car for backward motion, or pull it out and move it back toward the front of the car to go forward. Be sure to move the lever totally forward or backward. It has a micro switch that needs to make contact. It's an important safety interlock. Next, the controller. The controller makes the car go. Did you say escargot? I like escargot. Pas d'escargot. Je dis que le contrôleur fait marcher le tram. Le contrôleur fait marcher le tram. Ah, merci. The small lever on the controller is the reverser. Push it forward to go forward. Pull it all the way back to go backward. The center position is neutral. In the neutral position, the handle can be removed. We call the handle the key. With the key out, the car cannot be moved. Controllers have a number of notches. Advancing the lever through the notches makes the car go faster. Our controllers have just five notches. Originally, they had more. Here's the off position. To apply power, you pull the lever into the first point or notch. As the car gains momentum, you move to the second notch, then to the third, and so forth. As a general rule, you want to run the car in the fifth notch as much as possible. It's the most efficient use of electricity. Tell them about the quirk. Right. The quirk is, as you move the controller up through the notches, you cannot move it back. You can't go from notch 5 to notch 4. As soon as you move the controller back, the power is shut off. You have to go all the way back to the off position and move back up. We can't control the speed of the car from back here. We do have switches that turn the motor on and off. The motorman uses the controller to regulate our speed. Okay, brake valve control transfer lever, and controller. Those are the primary operational controls, but there are a few more things you need to know about. Right, like the controls for opening and closing the doors. On 1300, they're right here on the dash. So there, now you know everything there is to know. Well, not quite. We'll show you how all of this works together in part two of this series, Making It Move.